looking out at um, part of the form of Trajan and unfortunately you cannot have a nice overview of the entire square because it's been cut by medieval walls. These walls have been kept here because the excavation in this area have been conducted in the 90s with new modern archaeological techniques, meaning that you have to understand the development of a site. So even the medieval aspect of it is important to be preserved. As I'm looking at this remaining piece of the form of Trajan, I'm seeing some large marble fragments that are clearly the parts of, of a column. And if you walk a little further, we can see a little bit of the original flooring. These remains have been left here instead of being brought inside a museum to really show you a little bit of how lavishly decorated these places were. I mean, if you just look at the flooring, you are exploring expensive slabs of marble, green and red, together with green columns and red columns and yellow columns. So even the columns were not all white. They were colorful. It was a way of displaying the wealth, being able to bring marbles from all over the empire into Rome and being a Roman could permit you to bring the empire to you. Let's go take a look at the column of Trajan. So, the column, there are 22 different layers. They're not panels because they go around. So there's a kind of spiral. And it narrates the two main wars, two main campaigns, I should say, that Trajan fought against the Dacian chronologically. So it goes from the beginning of the war up to the top part that you can barely see, but at the end there is a scene of sacrifice. But it's... If you're looking at some of the scenes, you see that they are like building camps, building bridges. Yes, building the fortifications. And as we were saying earlier, in a sense, when you're going to bring your army somewhere, mm -hmm. you're going to build the infrastructure, infrastructure. That's, that's necessary to actually maintain that place. Yes, and we know that actually uh, the army was the building force during this wars because there would be camps and then would remain and would be transformed into city and roads and things like that. The image of this guy with his back towards us, this bearded man, is actually a representation of the Danube River, where the campaign started. We know that in Germany. Yes. It was and what is today? More or less austro Germany is that central Europe. So that's really a personification of the river Danube. Yes. Okay. Uh, all rivers are represented as bearded, half-naked men. Usually they're symbols to identify them. For example, an obelisk for the Nile, the she-wolf and the twins for the Tiber River. In this case, you see there are a series of boats and soldiers on top. Yes. This is the famous description. We know that the Paladars of Damascus, to be able to cross the Danube, built an entire bridge of boats yes. to do it. And this is a faithful narration of what happened. Can I ask you a little yes. bit about the base? The base is a representation of typical Dacian weapons and cuirasses. So it's a representation, not of the defeated people, you don't see people there, but the defeated weapons, so to speak. The enemy here is treated as a valorous opponent, of course, because if you have a weak opponent, your strength is not... That impressive. It, exactly. Right. The base of the column it's the laurel a, wreath. Yeah? It's actually an oak. It's a victory crown. Still struggling with how it's made. Those are blocks of marbles carved. Inside it's empty. You can walk. There's a staircase. Yeah, yeah there's a staircase inside. You can see the small windows. Yeah. You can go up to the top part. Right at the neck of the personification of the Danube, yeah. you can see that that's where two blocks join. Just to get a sense of scale. There are 22 layers, and each layer is approximately one yard. The base is also huge. So they carved pieces of the band and put them together? Exactly. Is no, no, they, they carved pieces. Just rather. painted? It was painted over with colors, and the colors would have helped to read it. But still, there was a percentage that was lost. But presumably, at least if you ascended the libraries on either side, yes. you'd be able to gain some elevation. Absolutely, yes. Again, it's a celebration of the army. It's the greatness of the empire, of the Roman people, be able to bring civilization. It's their ingenuity, it's their engineering prowess, it's their discipline. It's their ability to build. And those are, of course, attributes that last beyond the victory. And it makes sense to celebrate them here because those are attributes that really take into account the entire grandeur of the city and the culture. Exactly, and it's also a celebration of not just of the of victory, but of the entire reign of Trajan, so to speak, because he was able to build something, something lasting. If you think about the forum, yes. it's still lasting today. The idea was celebrate the person in his entirety, not just one of the aspects of, of his life.